Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 27th, 2020. And what a month we have had of incredible volatility, and it continued yesterday. So how about we kind of settle in, get, grab ourselves something to drink, and let's prepare for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, we come to a market after a beautiful three-day rally here in the market where we on the Dow crossed back above. We recaptured that 2018 low here in the market. As a matter of fact, this was the sharpest three-day rally in history. Um, remarkable volatility in this market. What's interesting about this rally is even though we were rallying, 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 if you take a look at um, the VIX, the VIX wasn't exactly going down. There was, There's still significant fear in this market as the VIX remains very, very high due to the volatility that we're seeing in price action. So fear stays very high, which is kind of odd um, seeing that occur when we see the market rallying so much. Yesterday before the close, I was telling uh, right way option folks that if I were brave and had the willingness to gamble my money, I'd be looking short um, this morning. Well, that's proved to be correct with a reversal, overnight reversal down. Um, right now, Dow futures are down 633 points. And it looks like we could lose that 2018 low here at the open. The question is going to be, can the bulls follow through enough? Will that $2 trillion, that hopeful $2 trillion, which I shouldn't say hopeful $2 trillion. Everyone knows it's going to happen, but hopeful vote occurs on that $2 trillion uh, stimulus bill today in the House and not extend into the weekend. But if that does occur, will that be enough to actually hold us up as we go into a weekend facing so much uncertainty and rising numbers uh, of infections, I mean, really exponentially rising numbers of infections um, here in the United States. We now have the grim honor of having the highest number of um, infections in the world. Um, pretty sad situation, and it seems that um, the spread is um, continuing to rise at an exponential rate. So over the next week or two, we could see those numbers continue to spike dramatically. So will that be enough to offset the worrisomeness that investors will have about the market? I don't know. So let's keep a close eye on this. I, I made the decision on Wednesday when I closed out some really nice profits to uh, just stand aside. And that's really what I'm doing. I made no trades yesterday. And it, it, unless I do some kind of really quick intraday trading, probably not going to hold. Well, not probably. I'm not going to hold anything into the weekend. Trying to hold into this weekend um, is just way too much gambling for me and too much speculation considering all of the all of the pressure that investors are going to face. And keep in mind, we still have, you know, in the, just around the corner, we have second quarter earnings that are going to begin. And I don't think too many people are expecting those earnings reports to be so good, particularly when we um, saw a record number of unemployment. Uh, I, I mean, just blew past record numbers of unemployment yesterday. Um, at, the, at the low of of 2008, we kind of topped out on unemployment around 700, and I want to say it's around 780,000, something like that. And, um, you know, we hit 3.2 million yesterday. Um, remarkable. The, the ramifications of that, no one really knows. And we're going to have to um, deal with that as we move forward over the next few weeks and the country remains locked down. 
So let's take a look at the SPY here real quickly. SPY rallying back up and recapturing a, a pretty important level of support yesterday, breaking back above that 255. But unfortunately, this morning, the futures are pushing that back down. We could lose that here this morning. It'll be interesting to see if the bulls will be able to step right back up, pushing that back higher. But certainly um, not showing us very good signs here overall. And by the way, if we take a look at some moving averages in here, notice our 50-day moving average is very, very close to crossing down through its 200-day. Um, serious technical damage has been created in these charts, and the volatility remains very, very high and extremely dangerous to trade. So, so be very careful out there. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. One of the good things about the NASDAQ yesterday is not only did it recover some support area in the chart that's pretty important, but we also once again recovered that 500-day moving average. The gap down this morning is not going to take that away, at least initially. Um, we are gapping down, but holding on to that 50-day moving average so far. We lost that price support, but we're holding that, uh, or excuse me, 500-day moving average. I kept saying 50-day. That 500-day moving average, we're holding on to that at least this morning. That'll be a key, import, uh, key level if we start pushing down toward the end of the day, if we can hold on to that that will be a good sign i think for the nasdaq and we'll want to watch that closely let's take a look at iwm iwm nice little rally yesterday rallying back up into some resistance areas this still has an awful lot of work to do and still has a significant amount to recover just to make it to the 2018 lows so a lot of work for iwm yet to do and you can see it's gapping down significantly this morning taking back the majority um, and almost all of yesterday's rally so keep that in mind pretty pretty rough market this morning um, in the reversal we'll see how that actually plays out once we reach into that open here today um, so with that let's take a look at what's going on in the VIX now we took that quick look in in uh, the VIX and saw that we really didn't sell off and normally you know you get <laughs> Um, several thousand points in a move and a rally and we could normally expect the VIX to drop dramatically. That didn't happen. So our option prices remain extremely high with very, very wide bid ask spreads, even with this big rally. And now this morning we face a 600 point gap down, which is likely going to see the VIX push back higher. So let's keep that in mind as we head into the weekend. Fear still really remains very, very high in this market, and uh, which means that very, very quick reversals are still um, obviously uh, capable of occurring and Boy, who knows what could happen by Monday morning. So keep a close eye on that as we uh, bounce around here in that fear index of the VIX. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122, this thing hasn't been very helpful here lately because it's just been dragging along the floor here. But three days of extended rally, we've moved up nicely here in, in that index. Now, typically I would tell you that we shouldn't see any kind of reversal until we reach up here about halfway. But we've been so oversold, um, certainly this morning's reversal is not looking good. So I would expect this to be pushing back down uh, this morning. It's going to be important to hopefully if we hold a higher low in here um, in the VIX and maybe we can start getting back to a little bit of normal. But obviously we're still in that bullish reversal zone, that area where we'd like to see the, those bulls take over. So it's possible. Even with the gap down this morning, you know, thinking about the stimulus bill maybe passing today, we could find bulls start to rally back um, if we get news that the House has passed that bill. So kind of keep that in mind. We could still toss around here quite a bit on the day. Let's take a look at... Um, our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar does have a few things that we're going to want to pay attention to and could move us around a bit um, as you can see here come on there we go as you can see here on our economic whoops wrong wrong window here we go 
that's the window I want to show you. Um, our economic uh, calendar, we have personal incomes and outlays here this morning, as you can see, 8.30 this morning. And then we're going to have consumer sentiment. It really is going to be interesting to see as these, you know, terrible um, virus impacts start to affect these numbers, how we will react to that. And I don't think anyone really knows um, how we'll react to that. So it'll be interesting to see if some of that has trickled into these numbers here. We'll want to watch that pretty closely here today. On the earnings calendar, we don't have a whole lot going on on the earnings calendar. Just over 40 companies um, are so reporting earnings today. And what's interesting is there really is, is very little in the way of um, stocks that I would consider to be notable. A lot of very small cap companies um, reporting this morning. So really nothing notable in there. We're gonna be more focused on this gap down this morning and what happens in in Congress today when the House, if the House actually makes it to passing uh, that bill. If there's a little bit of, um, you know, cantankerous, House members trying to hold things up and grab some spotlight. Um, it could certainly be delayed into the weekend, so we'll we'll just have to watch that carefully and see if we do get that uh, to pass today and that moves on to uh, the president. We could get a little levity out of out of the market, knowing that it's finally on the way. They're expecting checks to actually reach um, reach folks in about three weeks, so. Um, you know, <laughs> right now an hour in the market is is a long time in what can happen. An hour, we can flip around several hundred points. Um, uh, three weeks, a lifetime can go by <laughs> in the market. So it's hard to know how quickly we will start to see the effects of that stimulus bill. But um, one thing for sure, um, we could get a little bit of positiveness just on the vote uh, today. So if that does occur, let's watch that carefully. So with that, everyone, um, there's there's no earnings reports to really um, focus on this morning that I could really come up with. So let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, how about we, um, if you guys could do me a favor, um, it's always hard in a market like this to be asking for favors, but we're still trying to grow this channel um, significantly. And if you find these videos to be helpful, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up. You know, you guys give me so many, uh, you know, nice warm and fuzzies um, in the comments, and I so truly appreciate that. So if you find that these... Um, videos are helpful to you on how you may want, how you approach the day those kind of things if you would also click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment um honestly i'm so humbled by some of the comments um you guys are great i re really truly appreciate it and it makes it worthwhile getting up early every day to put these videos out so thank you so much for your support of the channel so a few things that are out there in the market are starting to look pretty good and I want to point out some of those some of those patterns and things that I look for in charts when I start looking for that recovery. So let's take a look and I'm going to go to a little bit of a shorter term chart. I'm going to go to like Microsoft. Now I have kind of a thing for Microsoft in the sense that they have a massive cash hoard. Um, I think everyone is pretty certain that Microsoft is going to survive um, the coronavirus and probably come out of this uh, doing pretty well. Um, the, obviously, there could be some bad reports or something still coming um, in this stock. But a couple of things that I like to see in a chart. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump here to let's go to an hourly actually. Um, go to an hourly chart, and you can see that we had this rounded bottom breakout pattern. Now the rounded bottom breakout is where price has been in a downtrend. We break that downtrend, move above that hourly uh, 50 um, average, and then we move up toward that 200-day moving average. Now we're starting to see that occur in quite a few stocks where we're getting that little bit of recovery 
What's unfortunate is the volatility of this market. It hasn't been a smooth ascent. It hasn't been a, a real tradable ascent um, much at all because of the extreme whip um, in the price action here in, in these charts. But what we want to see now now that we have rallied and you know this morning we're looking at a gap down open in the market what we need to see is in this pullback that we hold a higher low that we find support in here find some buyers that pick this up what we're really looking for is we're looking for that institutional support where those big guys start putting 401k money and those program funds back into the stocks they start picking up these values now obviously they've probably Probably begun to do that but what's going to be important is to make sure that they see that follow-through happening and if we get that follow-through then we can start seeing signs of recovery here that retail traders can really take advantage of and as we watch this recovery um, continue remember there is that high possibility when we go I'm gonna go back here to the Dow uh, for a second there is that high possibility and we've all seen this in chart patterns before where even though we make this rally we want to be cautious of that um, possibility that we won't have a V bottom here which I don't expect a full-on V bottom what I would more expect is maybe the possibility of a double bottom so we could see that rec um, um, selling wave going back in now it doesn't have to be a full double bottom we could make that little higher low in here um, creating that W type pattern but that's where we're gonna probably start seeing some recovery also remember there is certainly the possibility of what we saw in uh, 2008 is we had an inverted head and shoulders bottom where we rallied up significantly fell to a new low then rallied back held that higher low and created that inverted head and shoulders pattern in the market so in my thinking we're not going to work our way out of this virus very quickly as a matter of fact as numbers continue to rise we're going to see probably more shocks to the market and if that occurs just be just be um, uh, very aware of the fact that we could see this being a prolonged bottom um, and unlikely to be the just the the straight up um, a v bottom pattern when we get these big ugly sell-offs like this they usually take some time to work out and we know in the coming uh, coming quarter we're going to see a lot of bad numbers from companies as they report and that could easily you know um, put kind of a, an ugly spin on this market so don't be surprised if we get those really quick shocks or those violent moves back to the downside so just be careful not to be rushing in and that's why I've been kind of focusing on the shorter term charts when I look at those shorter term charts I get those tradable patterns that I can actually trade where we break back above and we get up here and we hold that 50 day and then we start making these successive rallies we get this nasty shock but we get those successive rallies where I can make some quicker trades in those markets but please keep in mind that this may not be finished and as as we continue to wrap up with these infection numbers there's going to be more shocks and I can't imagine that the news is going to be all that favorable uh, going through this weekend so just keep those things in mind protect your capital and remember we're not here to gamble we're not here to speculate we're here to be professional traders and as retail traders we have to be pretty darn sharp on that and remember that it's the institution's job it's the institution with their trillions and trillions of dollars that they have control of they're the ones who make the decision when the bottoms are in it's not our job as retail traders to pick those bottoms it's our job to recognize the signals when they have proven support of those bottoms and then we can get into trades with relative safety and make some nice moves so just kind of keep some of those things in mind as you head into the weekend hey I want to wish everyone a fantastic weekend and please everyone be safe take care of yourself take care of your family remember what's important here um, 
uh, family, um, taking care of uh, parents and kids and grandkids. That's what we want to see right now in this time of uncertainty. So please take care of yourselves. want to see you right back here bright and early Monday morning with uh, the Morning Market Prep and wish you all that wonderful weekend. Everyone take care. Have a great one. We'll see you Monday morning. Take care now.